Welcome to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I am your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm speaking to you from New York City on the 7th day of May, 2019. I do want to thank you for listening to this show, making it one of the more popular shows in the Voice America Business Channel. also want to encourage you to subscribe to my newsletter, miningstocks.com. Miningstocks.com is the name, uh, is the website to go to to subscribe to Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. And right now, when nobody seems to be too interested in gold mining stocks, I think now is the time that you should be interested and start looking at the gold shares. They are really underpriced now as much as I've seen them in a long, long time. I'd also encourage you to consider subscribing to Chen Lin's letter, What is Chen Buying? What is Chen Selling? ChenPicks.com is the place to go to sign up for Chen's letter. And, of course, Michael Oliver as well at OliverMSA.com. It's a place to go to really take advantage of Michael's expertise in the markets, and he'll be talking to us in just a moment about uh, what he's seeing in today's very exciting markets. Uh, Big down day in the equity markets, and gold is uh, catching a bit, so we'll see. Maybe there's a turn underway. Uh, I do want to thank our sponsors for making this show economically viable. Our sponsors for today's show, Great Bear Resources, Klondike Gold, Novo Resources, RN Resources, and Strike Point Gold. I've titled today's show, Optimizing Wealth Using a Portfolio of Precious Metals. Christopher Blase and Michael Oliver return as our guests today, and Sean Kunkun will be visiting for the first time. Sean is the President and CEO of Strike Point Gold. Chris Blasey's uh, Neptune Global provides an easy way to buy, sell, and or invest in a diverse basket of precious metals. A proprietary product offered by his company is the PMC Ounces product that has a fixed amount of gold, silver, platinum, and palladium in it. You can buy and sell it very easily on the Internet, but it is allocated to you personally. It's not – it is allocated – there are allocated metals to you and your – and to you alone. The metals are totally physical and, as I say, allocated, uh, and you can also take physical delivery if you so desire. PMC, the PMZC ounce is quoted in real time, and uh, as I say, you can buy and sell it uh, on the Internet, have it delivered, or have it set aside in an allocated account. So uh, Chris will be with me to discuss the supply and demand fundamentals for the precious metals, for all of them, I expect. Uh, and uh, we'll learn more about some of the products that his firm provides as well. As I mentioned, Sean Kuhn uh, will be with us for the first time, and he is the new president of a, a new and exciting exploration company in British Columbia and also uh, in the Yukon. Uh, so we'll be hearing from him after the first commercial break. But right now, Michael Oliver is with us, and uh, really pleased to have Michael join us again. Thanks, Mike, for coming on. Hi, Jay. It's an interesting day. Really interesting day, and so it's, I'm especially glad that you're on this Tuesday. Um, let's talk about the equities. I mean, how can we not talk about the equity markets? As I look at the screen right now, the Dow is down 567 points. It's a, Across the board, we're seeing uh, S&P and NASDAQ down by more than 2%, so it's a pretty significant down day. Um, could it possibly be, Michael, that this 10-year bull market may be nearing an end? Yes, it's possible. Our uh, trigger numbers for the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 have, were busted uh, two days ago, a bit more yesterday, and fully today. Now, this is, these are numbers that aren't what we call long-term uh, breakages. A lot of long-term breakages have already occurred, despite the recent rally. Uh, uh-huh. But we're back into, into downside pressure again, and we think it, it's probably going to sustain for a while. And the question is, can they drive it low enough for us via our metrics, which aren't price-based, but other factors, to where we can circle that recent high at 29.50 and say, okay, that was it. That was the third high in a widening pattern that goes all the way back to January 2018. Right now, I can't say that, but I suspect it. Uh, But meanwhile, we are getting intermediate downturn. There's more pain to come, I think, uh, in the next few days. Yes, it's news-related, and to some extent that confuses an issue. You know, we prefer things to happen without the news. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. So it's sort of a mystery to the investor. Uh, mm-hmm. th- those are the best kind of moves. But uh, this, is, this is a big one. Uh, it was touted on the way up. Now suddenly it's not happening. So uh, a lot of people are concerned. But our, our focus is also on the other markets, and we note that T-bonds are doing what they normally would do in this kind of situation. They're getting the bid because they're fighting mm-hmm. safety. That, that makes sense, okay? Uh, the 
gold market is quietly pushing higher, and we've defined some numbers to our subscribers uh, in recent weeks and adjust them weekly. Uh, they aren't far above the market. I can't get specific because you know, people pay for this. <laughs> but sure. They're not far above the market, but they're the kind of numbers that we think if gold tags them, and they, like I said, they're not far above where we are right now, that the other side of that would be a whoosh. And by whoosh, I mean if gold gets into those numbers, uh, we think it could go up 20 to $30 on the other side of those numbers so quickly that it'd take your breath away. Mm-hmm. In other words, get well back up into the 1300s in a, in a whoosh, uh, mm-hmm. such that the people who are, one, either skeptical and not in the market, or two, they got out because they're scared and tired, or three, they're short, would be ambushed. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the kind of upturn that should occur that way if it occurs, so we do think it's likely to occur. And we're playing with the numbers right now. We're just, just below them. Um, and it also would not surprise me that if gold does that, that it doesn't do it in U.S. daylight hours. Oh. We might come in one morning and gold suddenly up ten, twenty dollars It didn't do it here. It did it elsewhere in the world first. We just mm-hmm. gap up. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, that, that's the more important thing we're focused on, actually, rather than this S&P stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we view the developed stock markets of the world, it means Europe, Japan, and here, as not places to be, <laughs> period. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, there are better places to own stocks, emerging markets, perhaps China, and so forth, especially on a relative basis to the U.S., meaning long those stocks, short developed market stocks as a spread. Uh, but we think gold is still uh, the king, and it will show itself. Now, as far as the miners go, mm-hmm. they're typical. We, we describe them as a, as a puppy dog on a leash, like a <laughs> poodle, let's say. They're very yeah. emotional. You know, you go down, gold drifts down a little bit, and they, they fall apart. Gold yeah. upticks, they explode. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the nature of that relatively small stock sector. That's mm-hmm. the way it's behaved. It'll probably continue that way, which means as gold goes up and recovers and restates its claim to something well above 1350, for example, uh, the gold miners should do far better than gold. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, that's true in, in part, Michael, because I, I'd say a $50 rise in the price of gold is meaningful to the operating margins of the companies, too. So, I mean, it. It, it, it is oh, emotional, yeah. but it's also based on some reality. But I, but I get yeah. it. It's a very sensitive. You're right. Oh, boy, do I, I know at that. Least, at least three or four times the potency of gold on the downside mm-hmm. and upside. Right, uh, exactly. It cuts it, both it, ways. Yeah. 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 Well, Michael, let me ask you, right before uh, getting back to the equity markets, so right before we came on the air, one analyst was suggesting that if these, uh, if this level holds here uh, down 550 right now, if we hold – down this level, then he's going to be looking to sell the rallies going forward. Uh, would that be something you'd be comfortable doing if you're owning equities uh, I, now? I think this sell-off, my, uh, my, our best guess is that the sell-off gets the S&P down into the lower 2800s. Mm-hmm. Right now we're still in the upper part. We're 2870, that kind of thing. I mm-hmm. think you get down below 2850, um, and I think they will fight the bulls will fight touching 2,800. So uh-huh. if the sell-off has, probably has more to go over the next week or so, but the fight, the, the balance of forces is likely to occur above 2,800, and that's when it could get a little confusing. A rally from right here doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy who's looking for the rally, I think he needs to ratchet it down about two, two or three more percent before he, <laughs> he puts his bid in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Michael, how is the dollar behaving today? The dollar's firm. Uh, you know, it's yawning. Again, I, I keep pointing back to last August. The dollar index, cash index, got up to uh, 96.99. So let's call it 97. Mm-hmm. Well, we're trading, you know, a half a point or so above there now, and it's, what, 10 months later? Mm-hmm. So everybody, everybody's talking about the strong dollar. I, I see a yeah. flat dollar. It, it'll oscillate either side of that 97 for the last 10 months. Uh, by a point or two either side, and I don't call that a trend. I call that a yawn. Um, mm-hmm. So, well, let me ask you: with, with just a minute uh, left here, Michael, a minute or two, I guess we can spare two minutes. Uh, copper today, you put out something on copper. Um, it looks to me like copper is one of those places that's sort of uh, uncommittal. You just can't really know yep, which way you're exactly going to go on copper. Did. Yeah, 
that's what we said. Um, we've called them very well, copper, over the last couple of years. Uh, we called the buy, the buy signal in late 2016. It shot up over a dollar. Then we said, nah, in June of 2018, get out. It's probably going to drop. It dropped right about to where we said it would. And right now it's caught in confusion, technical mm-hmm. confusion, I'm saying. Um, it's behaving like the stock market to some extent. Oil behaves even more so like the stock market, and we view those two markets, the industrial-type commodities, let's call it copper, lumber, and oil, uh, as pretty much linked to the stock market. Now, I don't think that will continue. In other words, if the S&P is going into a major bear trend for the next couple of years, let's say, the bubble's going to break. I don't think it's going to drag oil and copper all the way down with it. There will be a point at which they will divorce. Why? Because they're, they're relatively cheap, uh, and they've already been beaten up a lot. But for now, they're still behaving, uh, you know, almost week by week, somewhat like uh, the, the S&P 500. So we have no real interest in buying them. Mm-hmm. I don't ha- have any technical justification to urge people to buy Freeport McMoran or Southern Copper, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there might be, but I don't see it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, you... <laughs> Freeport on Copper yawned. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't see it in the charts. and. Oil uh, also just uh, kind of stay away from it right now. I think think it's stay away from it. Now, the next major low in oil, which I don't think they'll go below that low we made back late last year at 42. I think it was about Mm -hmm. 42. I don't think we'll take that out, but we could get get down seriously into the 50s, I think. So I have Mm -hmm. no interest in the long side there, nor not really in the short side either. Uh, There's Mm -hmm. bigger things that... uh, pregnant things out there. I think one is the Mm -hmm. S&P major top being completed, finally. Uh, And... uh, I think the gold situation commands attention because I think the potential on the upside is so enormous and so speedy over the next year or two uh, mm-hmm. because the bubble's going to break. And the bubble, mm-hmm. of course, we're talking about the S&P 500 and developed markets. Sure. Why? Because they, they were printed higher over a period of about 10 years by central banks. And mm-hmm. only now do we hear this, oh, good economic news. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, the problem is the structure upon which that good economic news is occurring, assuming it, it lasts, that, that economic data points, right. is the structure of paper mache. Right. So the issue is the price of the S&P and how it mm-hmm. got up here, and it didn't get up here on, on good grounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got up here on fiat reasons mm-hmm. and uh, undercut well, interest rates, etc. So that's right. the problem with getting good news now. It, it's right. being added on top of a paper mache structure. Uh, paper um, mache in the debt market as well, of course, and uh, yeah. the whole house of cards comes down. Uh, well, if we're that not, comes down, what's gold going to do? You know, we know. We, yeah, well, gold, gold retains its value, and everything else loses its value. So that's that's why we buy gold. So it's not um, not the place to be most of the time. But boy, sometimes when it's good, it's very very good. Own gold. We know that from two thousand. And uh, eight, nine, in that time frame, uh, all the way up to 2011. What a bull market we had! Yeah, I'm, I think uh, the next expecting will be bigger, <laughs> bigger, bigger, possibly yes. bigger. And uh, we're not. I'm not personally cheering for that because uh, because of all the other misery that might come along with it. But better to own the gold than not. That's my philosophy. Michael, thank you so much for being with us again. It's always thank so you, good Jake. to have you, and especially on days like this, to help calm our nerves. 